Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to the Rome at War Total Conversion mod for Age of Empires 2. Now, like I said in yesterday's video, I want to be really clear about this. This is not the Return of Rome expansion pack, which is coming out tomorrow, May 16th. I'm really looking forward to that expansion pack, looking forward to sharing a lot of the new features with you guys. But for today's video, we're looking at the Rome at War Total Conversion mod which is a fan project that completely transforms Age of Empires 2 with brand new Antiquity Age civilizations and a whole host of unique features, including things like a revamped naval system and uh, multiple unique texts per sieve. You get multiple options, you have to choose from among them. And in today's battle, celebrating the upcoming Return of Rome expansion pack, we have... Rome versus Rome. In Team 1, we have BP Dredge in the blue, playing as the Roman Republic. And his ally in a civiliza uh, civilization that has recently been released for the Rome at War mod, we have in the green, the Conqueror playing as the Seleucids. And they are up against, in the orange, Doomed World, playing as another new civilization, Pontus, up against, as well, uh, alongside, Doomed World and Tech Chariot in the gray, playing as the Roman Empire. So as the players are establishing their early economies, let's go ahead and review what each civilization brings to the table, starting with our two Roman factions, engaged in a kind of Roman civil war. That definitely never happened in history. So, let's take a look here. BP, playing as the Republic. If we take a look, the Roman Republic, they're an infantry civilization. They advanced the next age 20% cheaper. Wow. Techs, except for aging up, are researched 50% faster. Town Watch and Town Patrol are free. Infantry gain plus one attack per age, starting in the early antiquity age, and shipyards work 25% faster. And don't forget that team bonus at the bottom. We gotta talk about that. Scorpions fire 50% faster. So, we see that the Romans are a really good, or at least the Republic, is a really good generalist all-around civilization. You age up the next age cheaper, all other techs research faster, uh, you have more visibility with Town Watch and Town Patrol. So, you just have this flexibility that I think makes the Republic a really fun civilization to play and very emblematic of what we see out of the Byzantines in AoE 2. A lot of similarities there, as well as the Italians, right? Uh, infantry gaining plus one attack per age means that they have a very strong infantry play. We've been seeing a lot more infantry play in vanilla AoE 2 thanks to Gambesons and just spotlighting infantry in that game. Well, now... Oh, look at this. Wait a minute. Oh, that's so annoying. Tech Chariot, you are annoying to play against. Ha 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 ha, look at this. What in the world? Uh, I'm surprised we don't see BP send his own scout to kind of... Oh, are we... No! No! Oh, no. That is so frustrating. All right, he will bring in the, the Rhino, but not without losing a Vill. Oh, it's just... I feel aggravated on BP's behalf. That is so annoying. All right. So. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So the Republic, a really solid all-around civilization. you got some really good infantry options, but I think you're pretty flexible. You have, um, if I'm not mistaken, you've got decent archer and cav options. So just a really good all-around choice. Now, comparing them to the Empire, where we just saw the Imperial Scout Cav just messing around with the... Uh, with BP's boom there. Tech Chariot, playing as the Roman Empire. Capped Ram, Onager, available in the Middle Antiquity Age. Scout Cavs, Skirmishers, and Spearmen cost 20% less. Again, a wink and a nod to the Byzantines, right? Uh, except, for the Byzantines, you don't get cheaper Scout Cav, but you do with the Empire. So, you got an interesting Scout Rush option, uh, but then, as the game goes on, you have that count, those counter units. The skirmishers and the spears also costing less. Legionaries, very solid infantry units, trained 25% faster in the Middle Age, Middle Antiquity Age, and then 50% faster 
uh, in the Imperial Age. They also gain plus one Pierce Armor throughout those two ages, and advancing to the next age is 33% faster. So the Empire and the Republic are kind of a mix of each other. That even goes into their team bonus, where Scorpions gain plus one attack. So it's interesting if you compare these two civilizations to uh, the Rome that we're going to see in the Return of Rome mod. I'm sorry, the Return of Rome uh, expansion pack. You see a lot of similarities. A focus on Scorpions, which are you know, Rome's version of the Ballista, right? Uh, you see a focus on Infantry, where, uh, you know, for the Return of Rome Romans, their blacksmith techs give them, I think it's bonus armor. Uh, which is pretty cool. Here, you know, you get extra pierce armor with the Empire, and then with the Republic, they attack better. Uh, with the Return of Rome Romans, if you're using a Centurion, then their Legionaries attack, uh, I think, faster or they do more damage, uh, something like that, which is pretty cool. So you see a lot of similarities there. An infantry focus, um, infantry focus, armor focus, Scorpion uh, is a huge thing. Not good archers at all. I don't remember how good the archers for the Empire are in Rome at War. But the Rome at War, the Return of Rome Romans, have very bad archers, so they gotta rely on their scorpions. Let's see here. Okay, a militia play coming in now for the Republic, moving in against the Empire. Interesting. Now, I've not talked about the unique technologies available to these civs. We see further focuses on scorpion play, cheaper castles, civilian units taking up less pop space, infantry slowly healing. So again, themes on scorpions, infantry, defensive play. We do see some of that in the Return of Rome Romans. And we're going to see similar things with the Republic as well. Testudo, legionaries, foot archers, and Praetorian Guard getting extra armor. Corvus, boarding ships getting extra... So that's kind of a naval option, right? Boarding ships getting extra range and armor. Marian reforms. Legionaries costing less, training faster. Principate can train five elite Praetorian Guard for each fort. Elite Praetorian Guards enabled at the town center. Pretty cool. So yeah, a lot of similarities there. And sure enough, we see Tech Chariot going in with the Scout Rush. One down, though. The Levy Spearman putting in good work. Yeah, and see, and this is this is what's hard for Tech Chariot is uh, this is more of a you know at this point the Scout is kind of falling apart. Here's another one coming in, but I don't know how much damage you're going to do with a Scout and a half, especially with Spearman on the field. Over here, Conqueror playing as the Seleucids, which is a new civilization for the mod. Let's walk over here. I think he's just scouting out. All right. Uh, we talked about them in yesterday's video, but let's get a refresher going. Heavy Cav Archers are replaced with the Afractoi, which shoot a little bit farther and have a little bit extra Pierce Armor. Not as much HP, but I think overall probably a better unit. Uh, let me see. Is there a fight going on? Ooh. Archer attack against Doomed World. Oof. And I think Doomed World really wants to be left alone right now. He has a blacksmith up and a barracks, but no cav, no archers of his own. He's in trouble, I think. Vill's down. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, he's doing what he can with his Vills. Which is exactly the play I would make if I were in his shoes at this point. But now you gotta, you gotta pull back now. Yeah. Yeah, pull back. Maybe. Yeah, no, just go. Just go. You don't want to lose all those bills. So, Sully Kids. They get heavy cav archers replaced with the Afractoi. Their infantry armor upgrades apply to cavalry, which gives them a, an incredible flexibility as the Sully Kids. Right here, we actually see going archers, which I think is something of a surprise. Um, if Conquer goes into cav and then decides to switch into infantry, he's got the armor already in place. That's pretty amazing. Camel Archers gain plus one attack, making them a better all-around unit on top of their anti-cav archer function. And then their farms occupy less space, which we actually see right here. Look at these baby farms. Isn't that so cool? You can fit so many more villagers around your town center. And that couples so nicely with the, um, 
What? It just means that you're able to produce so much more food. It, it couples nicely with a focus on cavalry play or infantry play. You've got to love these smaller farms. That's amazing. Um, Mark is also costing 50 less wood, which is pretty nice. If we go back over to Rome before I, I head over to uh, Doomed World, just want to take a look at what's going on on this side of the map. The Romans... Scout Cav, Scout Cav. Okay, so both players going into a, a Scout Cav fight against each other, which I find fascinating. Both players sort of walling in. I think wanting to play a little bit more defensively at this point. A market coming up for the Empire, Tech Chariot. Also has a Levy Spearman ready just in case. Yes. Maybe well more Selikid archers. And I gotta say, this is really surprising to me because I don't see anything in the Selikid game plan that lends itself to archer play. I think it's just looking at the map and seeing uh, that, you know, archers could work well in this situation, and he was right. If I am Doomed World, if I am playing as Pontus, I'm thinking I probably need to either get some skirmishers up or some scout cab. Or either that or, or I've got to get some watchtowers up just to defend my economy. Just boom into the second age. You will see Doom World is taking advantage of one of the coolest bonuses in the game and in the mod. Pontus, an additional town center may be built in the early antiquity age. So we see a very secure wood line uh, and allowing uh, Pontus to just boom off of two town centers, which is fantastic. And I think that will really help him out a lot. You know, he lost a couple of villagers early to that that archer push, but he'll be able to make that back and more with multiple town centers. Uh, fishing ships cost less, which doesn't really mean anything in uh, this part of the game, obviously. But chariots attack 25% faster. Chariots are a cavalry unit that do bonus damage against infantry. Uh, so that makes them very good against that. I, if I remember right, they don't have as much pierce armor as knights. So they still win against archers, but I think I would go cavalrymen um, if I were playing Pontus uh, against Conqueror here. And then auxiliary spearmen available in the Middle Antiquity Age. So if Conqueror goes heavy to cavalry, then you have auxiliary spearmen, which is the halberdier of this game, available in the Castle Age, the Middle Antiquity Age. On top of that, uh, team bonus ports and shipyards provide plus five pop space. Not really that useful in this game. All right, Conqueror. Feeling pretty confident, I think, with the damage done to Dune World. Moving on over now to try to be annoying with Tech Chariot. Let's take a look at villager counts right now. Everybody's pretty even. 39, 39, 40, and Tech Chariot with 43. So the Empire has a little bit of an eco lead right now. And both Roman civilizations are quick to the Middle Antiquity Age. Now, Doomed World is not... He's in the Feudal Age right now, or the, the Early Antiquity Age, but that's not a surprise. That's typical for a player booming on two town centers. So the question is, you know, will he be able to make it to the Middle Antiquity Age with that superior economy and, and kind of being able to withstand pressure from an opponent? Here we see the improved bowman being annoying and really trying to disrupt the Pontian economy, which I think makes sense and is exactly what you have to do here. Conquerors fully walled in. We see that stables are up and camel archers are on the field. So I think that's really interesting that he's going camel archer and not cav archer. I would expect Conqueror will want to take advantage of the Afractor. All right. Doomed World is on his way up to the Middle Antiquity Age. Improved bowmen are up for Conqueror. So that's like our, our crossbowmen, right? We've got to get these stables up. Come on. There we go. There we go. Good, good, good. All right, pull back. 
And now, you've got double stables. Bloodlines are coming in. I want to see knights. I want to see the cav armor upgrade coming in for Pontius. And then getting knights out in order to just wipe out these improved bowmen. And I think they would also do well against the camel archers. Camel archers do not do bonus damage against cavalry. Oh, ho, ho. we see from the Republic, legionaries are on the field. And they are moving out. Uh-oh. Meanwhile, the Seleucids doing damage. Oh, here we go. The Scorpions in for the Empire. Let's go over here. And remember, the Scorpions doing additional attack with every shot. I think this is a great choice. I think Tech Chariot has exactly the right idea here. A watchtower is up. Is anybody on stone right now? BP is not. Conqueror is. Doomed World also is. Neither of our Roman players are, but both of our non-Roman players are. Okay, yes, I like this. Now, you got four cavalrymen. I think you could probably clear the improved bowmen at this point, especially if you got armor. I don't know if you picked up the blacksmith text yet or not. But we, we need to clear these guys up as soon as possible. And uh, I think... Heavy cavalrymen. Now, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I, I think... Yeah, here we go, here we go. Why did I see the heavy cavalrymen up here? That's weird. I'll have to go back and watch the replay on that one. Anyway, yeah, so this should clear up the... This should clear up this force here from the Southern Kids. Uh, Conqueror does have the Castle Age Blacksmith Techs. The Knights are running on the Feudal Age armor and no attack upgrades. But Knights still will wipe archers, especially with those numbers. This is the incredible aspect of the Legionary. The Legionary is a Roman unique unit shared between the Republic and the Empire that allows them to switch between melee and ranged mode. So you're going to see here, the Legionaries are throwing their pilum, or uh, pila, if you want to pluralize that in proper Latin. Um, they throw pilum, and uh, that's like a spear, gives them that range attack. But then, if... Uh, you know, if you want to get into melee range, there you go. You switch them into melee mode, and they can pull out their gladii. Do damage. Uh, I want to see scorpions. Move those scorpions over. Let's let's get some damage in. Ooh, this is okay. This is a, a really good thing for Tech Cherry to have knights out. I really like this choice. If BP is not careful, he could lose the mango. If Conqueror's not careful, he could lose the archers. I just want to see these scorpions putting in work. I am worried that the legionaries will wipe out these knights. I think he's got to get in and get out. Get in and get out. Yep. Camel archers on the march. Now, Doom World is on three town centers. I'm looking at the Vill counts, though, and I'm a little bit worried for our Pontius player. 57 Vills is not bad, but 57 versus, you know, again, we got 75, 80, 65 from Tech Chariot. Both of our Team 2 players are a little bit behind on the economic front, and they are the ones that are being pressured. Oh, Camel Archers moving over to deal with the Romans. Well, the scorpion moving way too close to the action. All right, start firing. Start firing here. Yeah, this is scary. We need... I think we need more scorpions. 
Let's look over at Tech Area. He is producing. Cavalryman. I think that's not a bad choice. Again, Camel Archers don't do bonus damage versus Cav, so uh, I think that works. What do we see? Okay, uh, a Manganel coming out for the Republic. Scorpions with their addition. And what is going on? No! No, no, no! I'm sure Tech Chariot must have misclicked or something. Here come those Camel Watchers. So what do you do with Camel Watchers? Well, you could go Skirmisher. I like going Knights, actually. I think Knights are a good choice here. Uh, if I remember correctly, Cavalrymen should outrun the Camel Archer. I'm not sure who wins this fight cost-effectively, but I think we have more Legionaries than Knights. The Legionaries should win that fight. I think Tech Chariot is holding on well. Oh no! The fort drop coming in from the Seleucids against the Pontians. Now, Doom World going with the Cataphract. This is Pontius' uh, Pontius's unique unit. It's different from the Byzantine Cataphract that we're familiar with in AoE 2. The Pontius Cataphract, as you can actually see, has loads of Pierce armor. It has no base melee armor, but six, well, four plus two. Four base pierce armor, which makes them amazing against archery units. I love this choice when you're going up against an opponent going, uh, you know, camel archer. I think that's a really good pickup. So it's a great unique unit here and a good choice in this battle. When your opponent is going heavy into archers and camel archers, that's great. The concern that I have is Doom World has stalled here at about 56 bills, and that means that. Conquer with 99 bills has an economic power that's going to be hard to stop. I think we do see that coming into play with how many camel archers is this? 30 camel archers. And here we see, uh, let's see, Conquer is on three town centers. Uh, Doom World also on three TCs. We have one, two, three for Tech Chariot, and then one, two, and three for BP as well. So all three players battling it out on three town centers. Conqueror is the only player up to the fourth age, the Imperial Age, and so he has out Heavy Siege Onagers, which are the Roman War version of the Trebuchet. Let's take a look really quickly at, well, because we're in the Castle Age, while the battles are happening, let's look at the unique tech options that each Sith has. Starting with BP, the Republic, he could either give his Legionaries Foot Archers and Praetorian Guards one melee and one Pierce armor with Testudo, or you got the boarding ships getting additional range and armor. Obviously, Testudo is your choice here on a map like Arabia. In the Imperial Age, you can either pick up Marian Reforms, giving making his legionaries cost less and train faster. Or, Prinkipate, uh, training five elite free Praetorian Guards for each fort, and allowing him to train Praetorian Guards at the town center. So the Praetorian Guard is the other unique unit available to the Republic. 
I think we just see a lot of legionaries. I don't know if we see any Praetorian guards on the field yet. Oof, BP. Taking the win there. With the Empire. Siege Ballista. Scorpions have plus one range and minus one minimum range. Or Castro Network. Forts cost 25% less and build 50% faster. That's hard. In this situation, I, I like the idea of getting more scorpions, so I might go Siege Ballista. Ballistae. But then again, Castro Network would be pretty amazing as well. You want to turn out more forts to defend your base. Oof. Meanwhile, with our two new civilizations, Doomed World and his Pontus, who's definitely in trouble. His castle is down. And he needs to pull back his knights and sort of hope that Conqueror sort of maybe miss, misaligns his, his cameras. And here they go. And you can see, even with the cataphracts, you know, there are only so many cataphracts up against way more camel archers. They are able to absorb a lot of archer fire. Still, the cataphracts go down. And now I'm afraid it might be open season on Pontus. He's trying to train what he can over here in this castle, but it's already under siege. Unitex. Eparchies allow town centers to make nearby villagers move faster and regenerate HP. Or Asiatic Vespers. Villagers are stronger in combat. I don't know how useful Vespers would be here. Maybe that's the choice you go for now. It's like a last gasp effort uh, to push this back, but I, I don't think so. In the Imperial Age, Cappadocian Cavalry. Cav units gain a charge attack. Uh, a beautiful choice. It would be really useful in a situation like this. Or Chalka Speed Ace. Spearman gain plus 30 HP. Not bad, but when you're up against Camel Archers, I don't think the Cav could get in range. Doom Rule desperately trying to build another castle, but even if that castle goes up, it'll just get knocked down again. And then with the Seleucids. Conqueror. In the Castle Age, you either get Katakoi, military protection buildings work 25% faster. An amazing bonus. Or Politikoi. Cavalry cost 40% less gold. So what's more important to you? The efficiency of time or the efficiency of gold? Then in the Imperial Age, you either have Elephantry Corps, where elephants cost 30% less, and that is a huge discount. Or Keraspides, Spearman gain plus 5 melee armor. hard. The battle between our two Roman factions continues. Both players holding on. We look at the economies. BP with 135 villagers to tech chariots 104. That's definitely an advantage for the Republic but not an insurmountable one. I'll give Doom Girl this. I mean he hasn't not lost many of his villagers so far. But he's still on the 5070s guy. 55 now, but just that economic deficiency will cause a problem in the long run. Tech Chariot with the Empire, I think moving out a bunch of heavy cav, hoping to do some damage to the Seleucids. And I, I think this is a choice that's not only wise, but a choice that you have to make. And look at that. That house coming in just in time. Oh, that's so annoying. Conqueror able to wall up. Will BP move an army to attack? Or will he maybe engage on the Empire while Imperial Cavalry are away from home? Now, we're seeing this from a caster's eye view. I, I don't know that... Um, I don't know that uh, Tech Chariot necessarily sees this. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't see what we see, but... Let's go here. Yeah, he can't see this. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Okay, never mind. He can't see this, but I think the best way would actually be to break in on BP's side and then just loop around and, and you know, hit the cell you can see.
All right, the cavalrymen now. Getting a lot of damage on the legionaries. It's not bad. But he is having to fight two armies at once here. I think Tech Cherry's army has been decimated. Oh, and here we go. Wait a minute. There's, there's our unique unit, the uh, the Legionary. No, no, I'm sorry. That's Auxiliary Spearman, which has a unique Roman uh, skin for it. It's pretty cool. This fort is going to go down. Yep. Tech Cherry calls the GG. He's out. And that means Doomed World is certainly not far behind. I would be shocked if he decides to stay in. And that is the game. Wow, what a match. That is Rome at War. So guys, uh, I will have a link in the description below on how to download this amazing mod so you can try out... I want to say they're up over 20 civilizations now, something like that. Uh, let me see if I can get a list here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I think Persians have been reworked too. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 civilizations currently in the Rome at War mod. It's a really exciting mod that completely overhauls the game with a lot of new, unique, interesting, unique units, technologies, gameplay strategies. It is a lot of fun. I'll have a link in the description below on how to install the mod. Check it out. I think you guys will really enjoy this mod. Uh, obviously, tomorrow... The Return of Rome expansion pack comes out. I look forward to showing that mod off as well, so keep an eye out for that. And we will probably spotlight that for a little bit on the channel. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser, signing off.